In this video, we're going to look at the cylinder and cone objects in vPython, and in order to help us visualize uh, how they behave in three-dimensional space, we're actually going to start out with three cylinders to form an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. And what I want you to notice is that all three of these cylinder commands are exactly the same, except for their axis property. That's the first thing we'll take a look at, is that axis determines what direction the cylinder points in. So for example, this first cylinder points in the direction of 1, 0, 0, so it points along the x-axis. The second one points along 0, 1, 0, so this is our y-axis. And finally, this third cylinder points in the direction 0, 0, 1, so that's going to be our z-axis. Um, and then one other thing, I've used the uh, camera command here to just give us a little bit better angle on this. Um, we'll have a, a separate video about how the camera works um, another time, but for right now, the point of this is to just give us a little bit of perspective on these axes so that we're not looking at any of them head on. So here we get our three axes. You see that the three cylinders are identical. They've got the same length, the same uh, cross-sectional radius. The only difference is what direction they're pointing. And we've got our x-axis, our y-axis, and our z-axis. And I've made them semi-transparent using that opacity value um, just so that they don't get in the way too much. We want these to be a guide for us, not the star of the show. So if I come back over here, the first thing we need to talk about with a cylinder is the position uh, attribute. Uh, most of the shapes we've worked with so far, the sphere, the box, um, they measure their position from the center. So when you tell vPython to create a sphere, and you give its position, you're giving the position of its center. The cylinder and the cone, and the helix we'll see in a future video, um, are different in that their position is measured from the end point. So for example, if I want to have a cylinder uh, that starts at location, uh, let's say 111, then I put in position uh, equals vector 111. So this is going to be the starting point for the cylinder. And then I tell it what direction to point in using the axis property. So let's have this one point, uh, let's have a point parallel to the x-axis. Let's just go one, zero, zero. Um, so now we have where it starts and what direction it points in. We next have to specify the size. Now the size vector uh, basically gives the x, the y, and the z. Um, so the x in this case is going to, so the x is going to be the length of the vector. Let's have a point two units in the in the x direction and let's make it a pretty uh let's make it a pretty narrow cylinder let's go with a 0.01 and a 0.01 um and then we can leave the rest uh, actually let's give it a different color than the other let's give it color dot red how about that there we go and let's hit control two to run Okay, so here is our super thin cylinder. Uh, you notice, as advertised, it starts at uh, 111, so it starts out here. So these, um, so starting at about the halfway point for each axis, you can see it's starting at uh, x equal one, uh, z equal one, y equal one here. And it's going two units in this direction, so it's exceeding our uh, original x-axis length. Um, but again, the direction of this thing is determined by this axis property. So if I go, if I switch this to 0, 1, 0, it'll now point in the y direction. So here it's got the same length, the same kind of properties we had before, but now it's, uh, it's pointing upward. It's pointing along the y axis. And that actually brings us to the next thing we need to talk about, which is this axis vector is always measured relative to the uh, position vector. So in other words, you're giving the starting point and the direction that you want the cylinder to go in. You're not giving the beginning point and the ending point. So for example, if I wanted um, a vector that pointed at a right angle, excuse me, a cylinder that pointed at a right angle to this one, I could just uh, switch this axis to zero, zero, 001 and it's going to point in that direction relative to the position vector. It doesn't point to the point zero, zero, 001. So you see here you've got these two, they're at right angles to each other. So one is pointing uh, in the zero, 010 zero direction, one is pointing in the zero, zero, 001 direction. So you're, you're basically giving it a, uh, a unit vector in which to point. Um, you can also use this, for example, to create multiple parallel cylinders. 
because if I copy and paste this and then just change the position, let's shift the position over in the X direction, now I get two vectors that have different starting positions but the same axis, whereas these two have the same starting position but different axes. So it works pretty straightforwardly. Um, and you notice they've all got the same size, so I could also change the size of this one if I cut this uh, width in, or excuse me, this uh, length in half. Then I get different starting point, same axis, but a different length. So the axis and the length are controlled separately. So one is, one is the actual dimensions of it, the other is what direction the thing is rotated in. And of course this axis property will also work even if you don't go in, uh, in, in, in a Cartesian direction or in an X, Y, or Z, you can also have this thing point in the, uh, let's say the XZ plane. Let's go in the negative X direction so we don't overlap with anybody else. So this will have the same starting point as the first one, but it's going to point at a, it should be a 45 degree angle compared to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so here's our new vector. Uh, you notice it's pointing along the negative X, positive Z direction. And you notice it, that even though I gave it, um, even though I didn't specify a, a unit vector for that axis, it goes ahead and normalizes it so that this cylinder has the same length as these other cylinders because they've got the same size vector, which is pretty cool. I suppose to tidy this up a little bit, I should give these uh, folks different colors so that you can tell them apart. Let's go green, yellow, and cyan. So now, I should have done that at the beginning, I guess, but now they'll be easier to, uh, to tell apart. There we go, there's our uh, color-coded uh, cylinders. Now they look like uh, resistor markings or something. Um, the last thing we need to look at is the size vector. Again, this is relative to the axis, so the X component of the size vector is always going to be the length of the cylinder, and then the Y and Z are the widths of the cylinder um, going along the Y axis and along the Z axis relative to how the thing is rotated. Let me show you what that means. Let's copy our original vector here, copy and paste. And what we can do is first let's move it over. Where do I have space to move this thing? Uh, let's move let's move you over to the left. So let's move you uh, let's put you on the negative side. Let's put you on negative one. And so if I want to make this thing wider, I just change these two components. I change the y component and the z component of the size vector. So this will be our second. This will be the larger red one, basically. And so here we've got our, our, our cylinder. We've copied it, displaced it. We've also made it wider. Um, and because I made both of those uh, Y and Z components the same, we get a circular cross section. You don't have to make those the same. I could make one of them twice as wide as the other one, and I'll get an elliptical cross section, which is pretty cool. And so here you get your elliptical cross section. So it's, I guess it's not technically a cylinder. Uh, have to look up the formal definition of a cylinder but you can get these shapes that have an elliptical cross section which is pretty cool if you want to do something studying uh, ellipses uh, this is a good way to to do it and give it a little bit of, of depth here and then I have one more note here at the end to talk about cones cones work exactly the same way it just gives you a cone instead of a cylinder um, so you can use all the same arguments and you'll get a cone that's the, the same basic properties of the cylinder. It just goes to a point at an end. So for example, let's try, let's try replacing our yellow cylinder here with a cone. So what I'm going to do is grab the yellow cylinder uh, command here. We're going to do control X to cut and here we'll do control V to paste. And all I'm literally going to do is change this cylinder name into a cone and press control 2 to run. And here we get our yellow cone. Uh, you notice that it works exactly the same way. We start out with the same position. We get the same axis and the same size parameters. Uh, the only difference is that it tapers into a point at the end instead of remaining a consistent cross section. Uh, I can even uh, make it into an elliptical cross section cone. Let's make it a 0.3 and a 0.1. And there you have your, your elliptical cone. So we've, we've, we've taken this cone and we've squished it one way compared to the other. So those are the basics of how you work with cylinders and cones. In the next video we're going to take a look at a similar object called the helix. 
which is something you use if you want to model a spring. And it's set up much the same way. It has some additional features that we'll get into and we'll use it to uh, see how we can uh, create an animation with it. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.